You got my me? man, David. What's going oh, on? Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. First Hi. off, first off, you've got the new hairdo. What's what's happening over here, man? Where was that on the show? I know, I know. A few people said they like it now, but then other people said they like the bun back then with the braid. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't make everyone happy, but David, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come join us here on the show. Uh, Abe, you got the first question today. We've got so much to talk about, especially about that like super exciting elimination last night. I, I don't know if it was as exciting for you, man, but we've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> David, I, I, look, man, I've met George. Mm. He's the nicest guy in the world. What's really going on? Tell us the truth. Tell us what's really going on. He's look. He's he's nice <laughs> if he doesn't play Survivor. That's, that's <laughs> he, he's he, you're right. He's one of the best blokes outside of the game. He's awesome, but in the game, he's just he's conniving. He's smart. He's manipulative. He's he's everything that you want in a Survivor player. Like you do, you want to oh, watch yeah. that as a fan. It's great to watch. He's he's so cunning and and it's great, but. Um, you do kind of go, like, and then you meet him outside, and you go, okay, you're actually a really good person. So I, I do, I do love him outside of the game, but in the game, he got me good. I mean, we yeah. were sitting here before before you hopped on, and we were like, why is everyone going to George? It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Like, surely everyone sees that they have to get him out. Heading into that tribal council, how confident were you? That the plan was going to work. You had Hero Strong, and then you had Simon in your back pocket. You had the numbers all worked out. This had to come as like an actual shock once you start seeing your name get read uh, by Jonathan. Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, to your point, like early in the show when, oh, sorry, early in the game when the heroes kept winning challenges, we couldn't believe George just kept rocking up to the mat the next day. We couldn't believe it. Like we were winning, we're going, surely they're voting at George tonight. Surely they're voting at George. <laughs> you would think, yeah. Just, <laughs> and he just kept coming, kept coming. Then he got saved and, oh, it's, it was amazing. But um, going into tribal, yeah, we we definitely thought we had the numbers. We we had a great chat the night before, um, like you saw in the in the dark um, the night before. And and Matt come to us and, and said, look, I'm all on board with you. And and Matt's the lovable guy from the Gold Coast. He's a lifeguard. I told he's, you. He's someone you trust and you think you trust completely. Just a <laughs> sweet, innocent, like the young kid on the block, like, oh, and then um, he's completely turned on us. So we we he looked us in the eye and said, "I'm with you." And which obviously you do in Survivor, you lie. So that's fine. But he he did that and he got us. He pulled the wool over our eyes. Um, Haley was one too that she obviously wanted to work with George for a long time, which didn't come to us as as something that we saw. So going into tribal, we went, "Yep, seven five. Like we got this. Like we're going well. Um, we're OG hero strong. We're back together." Uh, and then all of a sudden, when you see your name get read out, it's, <laughs> it's heart like, drops. And um, what the not, hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not something you expect now. At all. Now, David, now we got the villain tribe, we got the good tribe. What about Sean? Because Sean got an actual idol that no one knows about. Sean got my idol. That's what put it that way. <laughs> I, um, I found the clue in the pizza box and then uh, I share it with Sean, which we shouldn't have in the end because Sam and I are the ones that had it. And then we shared it with Sean and Sean finds it and never tells anyone. So um, that was, I mean, it was a great move on his part. Shocking for me. I, I mean, being a newbie in the game, I thought, all right, let's trust one or two players. <laughs> and, and no, never, ever tell anyone <laughs> about that ever. So... That's something I've learned now that I would open that pizza box, take the clue myself, and then try and go find the idol rather than sharing it. So Sean's got the idol. He's still got that up his sleeve, and no one is uh, aware of that. So I hope he doesn't get blindsided where he still has it in his pocket. I hope he he gets to a point where he feels like he needs to play it and does play it. Um, but, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I'm going to keep referring to it now as your idol. That is David's yeah, idol every time I idol. see it on the screen. <laughs> now, we, we we like to ask on the show, we like to ask some questions that you might not get a lot about the season. I'm sure we'll cover some of your relationships here in the next couple of minutes. But yep. you guys got to enjoy some amazing rewards this season as you guys were just the dominant tribe all season. You and all four of the guys. What what yep. Maddie called, or no, not Maddie, Benjamin called it the media lions. So yeah, you guys dominated yep. the show. Uh, but you got this one challenge in particular. It was the Survivor Bakery that you guys got to go to. And you had to hand, Sam had to literally handpick who was going to eat what. And you were the, that day was your lucky day because you got that giant chocolate cake. <laughs> So this is some insight that I don't know if you've shared yet. How much of that cake did you actually eat? Because that thing was massive. 
And do you uh, regret eating how much that you did? How much you actually uh, did? So leading up to that challenge, we Sam and I, because obviously we were pretty close out there, we were talking yeah. every day about what we love. And every day for the first eight, nine days, all we're talking about was chocolate and cake and how much we love. Like I'm a sweet tooth. Sam loves chocolate, as you saw later in the later in the game. So immediately when he got the scroll, I was looking at him going, please, like just please <laughs> pick the chocolate cake. I ain't that cake now. Yeah, I was. I, like, yeah, you didn't see it. I was literally just looking at him, looking at the cake, looking at him, looking at the cake. That's all I was doing. Um, and then, but it was a it was a double decker chocolate cake. Like it was massive. And the immediate first bite I get is like heaven, heaven on earth. Like it's unbelievable. The cake tastes. Like, then you start having all of the icing. Then you start realizing how rich it is. And then <laughs> your body starts going. <laughs> body starts going. Hang on a sec. I haven't had sugar for 12, 15 days right now. Like what's hit me? So all of a sudden I was like, I was in all sorts. Like I was bad. I was going, no. And then Sam, all the girls are going, like Haley and Nina were yelling at me going like, stop eating. Like just stop eating. You're going to make yourself sick. Sam's going, nah, I chose you to eat that cake. You're eating that whole thing. Like, right? <laughs> uh, the bro's got your back, man. Bro's got- <laughs> yeah, so I'm feeling pressure. Um, so I got, I got to halfway. So I ate half of it, which is like basically a full cake because it was double. And then all of a sudden I was like, hang on, I need to smash this open and see if there's anything in here. So I basically just completely smashed the cake, flipped it upside down, like got in all amongst it. But by this time I was already feeling sick. Um, What you didn't see is Sean came over and started burping me. He was tapping me on the back, (laughs) (laughs) trying to burp me up. So, um, and then, and then I can tell you now the sugar crash about 20 minutes after that was ridiculous. I fell asleep for about an hour um after that so that was a, a fun day um eating that chocolate cake we me and me and brandy always talk about survivor us versus survivor australia because i did us survivor and we didn't have no cake there was no <laughs> cake <laughs> we all shared yeah. coconut the fiji and islands we all sharing coconut now when you got that first phone call what was it like to say hey now i'm going to actually be on a show that i've been looking at watching yeah, well, I've been a, a Survivor fan since 2002 when the first American one came out, or 2000, whatever, 2002, 2003. I absolutely love the game, and and when I got the call to be on, I, I jumped at it. Like I've been, I don't know if you guys know, I was a professional athlete, um, past football in my time, oh, yeah. and being yeah, being a competitive player um, as it is, it's like, all right, I'm retired from that. What's next? What's a big challenge that can challenge you physically, mentally, emotionally? And it's like, what 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 is that? So. When Survivor came up as an opportunity, I completely jumped at it straight away without a second thought. I was like, yep, yeah, yeah, let's go. Um, and then coming into, into it, like the challenge that Sam and I won, the very first immunity challenge where we're throwing the hammers to the clay targets, like that feeling of winning the first challenge, that euphoria, I hadn't felt that since I played professional sports. And oh, nice. immediately, immediately I was like, oh, my, like, this is amazing, like that that feeling of competitiveness and winning. And I was like, I felt just like, yes, like this is, this is back. And, and this is what I wanted Survivor to be for me. And, uh, and that's immediately, I felt like I was at home in Survivor in Samoa. Like, this is what I want to do. And, and I absolutely loved it. Now, one now, of the, he- uh, one of the themes this season has been, you talk about that competitive background that you got from football. One of the themes has been throwing challenges this season. We've seen three challenges <laughs> thrown. Mm-hmm. Have you been a part of any of them? And if they came to you about throwing a challenge, would you even be able to? Because I know in the sports world, that is just forbidden. Never throw anything. Put your best foot forward. Yeah. So the one that we threw, the first one, the rogue vote, Haley come to us about that. And immediately I said, well, take me off the challenge. Like I'll be, ha- I'll be hanging on to that beam for hours on end if you want me up there. So – that's why I said, well, I can't sit in that challenge because I'm not going to drop to throw it. Um, and that's why you saw um, me and, and the three guys, and they, had, they might have had their own reasons. But my reason was my competitive juices, I don't want to throw a challenge. I want to win. So that's why I sat that out. I was like, put me out, put me on the bench. <laughs> we're not um, doing this today, yeah. Yeah, we're not doing it. Because as soon as JLP says, all right, ready, go, I'm I'm, I'm in. Like That's the mode. Yeah, so the other one was the, um, the Simon, the memory challenge with Simon. Yes. Um, out there and and um obviously there's there's a lot of things happen there and and it might not every edit might not get shown whatever 
but we um, we were throwing that challenge and, and I didn't want to lose um, out there. So it was like, well, if I'm getting my turn to go out there and do the mental challenge, I'm winning. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm trying, I'm trying to I don't to think you did Matt. that one either, did you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to save Matt and Flick, but I'm like, well, I'm not doing that because I'm going out there and I'm racing to that board, remembering that and going back and doing it. So um, I, I did want to be a part of the throwing challenges because it's not in me to throw challenges. Now, we, we saw the challenge where you had to go on the water and hold your breath and stay up under the cage in the U.S. Two mm. competitors in the U.S. outlasted the challenge. How brutal was that challenge in Samoa? It was, uh, it was it's brutal. It's it's not physically challenging because you're just holding the bar. It's mentally knowing the water's coming in, the tide's coming in, and and trying to pick moments where, all right, the water the, t- the water's rising, and it, you have to wait till the water obviously drops. And, and you know that that'll happen, but it's mentally knowing that my next breath, is it going to be water or is it going to be air? Like you don't know at that stage what, what it's going to be. And that's the hardest part. Like we we lasted, Matt, Nina and I were the last three and we were 50 minutes there. And, and honestly, for me, it felt like 10 minutes. Like, because I was so focused wow. on breathing and it honestly felt like 10 minutes. I, Does this I do anything? Work. Does this actually oh, yeah. work? I, I should have done the double. I only did one. Um, Matt was doing the double points and obviously he's a lifeguard. So he kind of knows what to do in that moment where it, it did do a bit. It did. Cause if you didn't do that, you kind of just had the water there. So the snorkel did work for a little bit. Um, and I should have done the double, but I kind of panicked. I got a wave and I, I did, I did breathe in water. Yeah. Like I was saying, and, and rather than trying to hold my breath for maybe another wave where I could have done it, I just kind of panicked and got up. Um, the hardest part about that challenge is you don't know who else is still in the challenge. So for other challenges where individual immunities, you kind of look to your side and you may be holding something and you're like, mm-hmm. I can try and get one or two more minutes out of me in this moment. I can try and get one or two. Whereas this moment, you're like, you don't know if all 12 are still in the game or. I mean, or, you um, were shocked. I'm pretty sure you were the one who came up and said, what they're still going. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. I couldn't believe that people, there was um, people in there that were still going. I, I didn't realize that Sam and the fact that, sorry, that Matt and Nina were still in there and the fact that it was only, or well, sorry, that it was already 50 minutes. Like, for me, honestly, I felt like it was 10 minutes. Like other people might say five hours. I was like 10 minutes, that was it. So um, I was pretty shattered that I didn't really push myself to the point where I was coughing up my lungs of water. <laughs> I, um, if I hadn't known I was that close, I would have pushed myself a bit further. So you have you have the physical aspect of the game, which we talked about with these challenges. And then not only the challenges, but having all that cake and enjoying the food as well and trying to maintain how much you have. But you also have the social aspect of the game. That's a huge part of it. Um, we saw many alliances that you were a part of this year. You had the bromance, as I like to call it, the meaty boys. You guys seemed as tight as, I, I don't know, as as thick as, as blood or whatever term you want to use for it. Um, and then you had the relationship with Nina, which we really didn't see. Unfortunately, the edit at the start of the season, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that too. You didn't get much of an edit to start the year. And then we found out that you and Nina were super close. And then that kind of went into this, this four, group of four alliance, you, Nina, Sam, and Liz, when you tried to bring her yeah. in. So when did you feel the most secure in the game? And which out of all those alliances did you fully trust the most? Yeah, so I, I felt secure early because so early on it was myself, Nina, Sam, Sean, Matt. Um, myself, Nina, Sam, Sean, Matt, and Flick. They were kind of the six that we kind of connected from day one on the beach and and it was obviously the four boys, basically, and Nina and Flick, right? And and there was no hierarchy. It was just, it was great. It was all us six going, all right, what could we do? The rogue vote was easy. Let's vote out Jerry, um, who then went to the other side, that, that kind of thing. So it was a strong six, but it was 14 days of us not really having to make any moves. Like, we, we won most of the challenges early. Then the rogue vote was easy. And then it was day 14. It was like, okay, what's the vote here? So <laughs> that was kind of the early alliance that was, we didn't really have to make any moves. And, and you felt really secure because we we were just keeping ourselves in the game by winning challenges. Then it got gets the tribe swap and it's like, all right, well, I've got a fair core of my alliance here. I've got Nina and Sam and Sean right here with me where we've got the numbers out here. So I felt really comfortable there. Then all of a sudden kind of, I wanted to go after Haley. I think if you guys remember early in the season, yeah. <laughs> and it got it got shut down by Sean. So then later in the season, when I realised that Liz was on the bottom, we go, all right, we've got a number here. We can use Liz, Sam, Nina, and I. We're a three. We can make a four. Bang. We don't need Sean anymore. We can now blindside Haley. And then my plan was to blindside Haley, 
go to Sean the next day. Sean, look, you've been on the top of the tribe for this this long. You either come play with us or we're going to go for you next. Because I still want to. <laughs> He's godfathering <laughs> out over here. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that was my, that was the plan. So. Um, because I, I love Sean and I, I love him, but he was kind of becoming that two dominant figure where he was annoying. Like yeah. people were kind of coming after him. Um, like Nina was getting annoyed with him. Like Nina got really annoyed with him with that Sam vote. Um, and Sam obviously was off him because of that vote too. So that was kind of the part where we could have gone, all right, we're a strong four here. You either come with us or you're, you're gone next. So I really liked that alliance that I was building. Nina and I were, so Sam and I became like kind of best mates since day one. We just clicked personally, but Nina and I were really strong and number one strategically with each other. Like we told each other everything. So I was getting all the information from the boys. Nina was getting all the information from the girls and we would come together every single day for hours on end and chat about strategy. Like what could we do? Who's this person? How could we go about getting this person out, bringing this person in? So that was, yeah, it was kind of frustrating a little bit that it only got shown about day 20 that all of a sudden Nina goes, I don't want David out. He's my number one. <laughs> and you guys watching it going, hang on a sec. Like, I haven't, <laughs> yeah, where yeah, did it come from? from? <laughs> yeah, so we we honestly, we were we were close from day one um, and, and it was a really strong relationship and, and a really strategic one at that. We, we, we were feeding each other from every bit of information. So I was really comfortable and really strong with Nina and Sam uh, at that point in the game. Now, if you had to go back there and change one thing going into that tribal, what would it have been? It would be trust my gut. Like that's honestly, it would be trust my gut. I, early in the season, I, I, I'll bring up that uh, tribal in a sec, but to go back to the idol. So trust my gut. So I, Sam, Sean and I are looking for um, the idol. And one day Sean goes, um, I'm going to go look for the idol now. Like this is my time to go look, right? And within about 10 seconds, Sean's walking back to camp. And now in my head, I'm like, well, he's clearly just given up looking for the idol, but why is he given up? Because he's probably already got it at that stage. So he, he didn't want to waste his day looking for the idol. So, but in my head, I'm like, that's a bit weird, but I didn't trust that. I didn't want to go to him. I didn't want to trust my gut being like, that looks a bit weird that he's not searching for the idol. So trusting my gut is one thing that I would play in again. I would straight away go to Sean and be like, mate, you're not looking for the idol. Like, have you found it yet? Like, tell me now and really start questioning him. So back to now, fast forward to the, the tribal, I would go to Matt. And be like Matt, you were on the bottom with the with the the mm. uh, heroes two point Why are you still in the game? Like, clearly, have you cut a deal with George? Have you cut a deal with Shawnee? Like, you and Flick are meant to be gone, but now you guys are still in the game. So, getting to merge and realizing that Matt was still in the game, I would really trust my gut and be like, no, no, no there's something on here. Like, there's a red flag. Like, Matt's in the game for a reason, and which clearly he was because he flipped on us. But I kind of trusted that he would come back to us. Mm. So I think trusting my gut and going with my instinct and then acting on it would be something I would change in the game, um, especially because there are instances in the game where I thought things were happening, like the Sean thing with the idol, like Matt, but I didn't trust it. I, I kind of didn't really go for it and just go, all right, whatever happens, happens. If it's collateral damage, if I'm out, I'm out. But I didn't really go after it. And that's one thing I'd really change. We have, so we have time for one more question here. And once again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us, David. Um, So I'm going to kind of loop two questions that I had into one here. So yep. I did my, I did my research beforehand. You played 13 seasons in the AFL. Yep. How does this compare to those 13 seasons in terms of the game of survivor? When you're talking yep. to your league mates, are you yep. going to tell them this was way tougher? Was the AFL tougher? And then will we ever see you out there again? Do we get to see David compete for a second time? Come back. So the, the the thing with the thing with football and like the NFL in America is you play and then you've got a you've got another week to make up for your mistakes from the game before. Like you come in Monday, you look at review, look at retape, and then and then the next week you can correct everything that you've done on the weekend. So you've got another week. Survivor, the hardest thing about it is what every single decision you make, the next thing could be you're gone and then you've never got a chance mm. to go again. <laughs> like that's it. Like it's the finalized, it's the it's it's the finale of your movement that can happen, or your um, sorry, what am I trying to say? Um, everything that can happen could be you're gone. Whereas in footy, you can back it up the week after. So the pressure of that and every decision you make that could be your last decision because it has every single effect on you with every person out there. That is the most difficult thing I find that competes with footy. Footy is a lot easier in that regard where, yeah, I make a mistake. I'll just, I'll just correct it the next week. <laughs> Survivor, you make a mistake and you're thinking about it for a month after at home. <laughs> that's, <funny>. like, what, <laughs> what so that's that's the hardest thing. Um, 
So I find that difficult. But in the comparison of the two, Survivor's challenging in terms of it covers every aspect. It covers social, mental, physical, emotional, and footy kind of is just like a sport where you just you're playing footy, you're having fun, you're doing that. Whereas paranoia can set in in Survivor out there, and and you got to really not wig out and and get into the point where you're really worried about things happening around you. So um, that that's that's how I kind of compare the two. Would I go again? One hundred percent. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we'll see David again. I, I would. I would, like. If you ask me that question again before you finish the answer, before you finish the question, I would already answer it. Like I would one hundred percent go on again. I love it. I I embraced everything out there. I love the challenges out there. I love just being out in that environment. It's it's not something back that everyone back. gets. To I, I would do it. Yeah, I would. I would oh, wow, go straight okay. back in. Yeah, I would go straight back in. It's it's. It's so unique that so few people get to experience in the world, and it's such it's the best game in the world to play. Like I, I'm not I'm not um, saying that for the sake of it. I truly mean it. I would go back out there and do it again. I loved it. Uh, Abraham, anything to say before we let David go here? Hey, great seeing you out there play. Hey, Survivor forever, man. If we ever get a chance to go back, man, I want to go back too. So enjoy, Thank man. You. Pleasure talking to you. Great meeting you. Hey, we will interview you next time in Australia. I'm going to speak it to this. <laughs> yeah, I can That's tell true. you're a true fan, David, and I love that about you, man. And it was super fun to watch you play. We wish you, we could have saw more of you and see you go farther as well. But I don't think this will be the last time we chat with you. You have oh. an open invitation if you ever want to come on and break down some of these episodes in the future with us. We'd love to have you, man. Perfect. Thank you so much. Just hit me hey, up thanks, David. On. Of course. Have a great night, man.